Hello, my name is Zelda Kelly. I'm with PsychicSecrets.com and welcome to The Great 78. This is the first in our series. Our series starts out with a fool. The journey begins here. Now, I do want to say that while we are going through the elements of this card, and I believe that each one of us will resonate with this fool. Now, I'm not saying that you're foolish. I'm saying this is the fool's journey. It is about a journey. So let's not even think about this, okay? It is about how we begin how and how we end. We're going to be following this fellow through really thick and thin, good times and bad. It really does resonate with all of us. So let's begin. And I'm going to pull you in just a little closer. Pardon me if I wiggle the camera so you can see all of these elements. The key, we're going to be going through a lot here. There's a lot of elements here. The key is the zero. Now, it is usually the first card in the deck, but in some decks, it can be the last card. It is part of the special major arcana and really considered the fool's journey and not just a fool by himself. You see, I think it's important that we go through this particular journey, the Great 78, with the Rider deck. Because the Rider deck does depict, and you will get a lot of these meanings, and a lot better understanding of each card by using this illustration. As an example, here is the Celestial Tarot deck that you see me use quite often. But this is the Fool card. Now, how can we derive any meanings from this if we did not have study or we did not understand what the fool card actually meant? We do see the key element, which is the zero. But you see, this is depicted, depicted as a joker, as a gesture, as a jester. <laughs> I think so, a court jester. So another little interesting thing is that the tarot came from the original playing card deck. Maybe may have you, some of you may have not known that. But the fool does correlate with that joker in the playing cards. It's funny because as we go through this journey, we're going to be seeing some other elements of each card. One of the things that I think is very interesting about the Fool card is that in many layouts, because this will depend upon the cards around it as to what meanings that it does take over, and each card will be that way. The Fool card is also known as the excuse card. If someone does not want to commit in business or in relationship, this fool card may come out to where you see that that person that you're maybe asking about is making excuses, excuses not to go forward. Why? Well, let's take a close look at him. Not paying attention. Not, he's distracted. Something there that doesn't grab his attention. You can see that by he's looking up in the air and let's take a look at his face. Just just almost a blank look on his face. Going through. And look. He's about to step off that cliff. The little doggy there. Well, he's trying to warn him to pay attention. That's why you're going to see in this fool's journey that this many attributes fit this card. One of them is the vital principle of plants, animals, men, and women. And a total energy that is really not male or female, but an energy itself. So this little dog plays a big part. Why? Because this is 
of movement card. You see there's a lot of movement in this card. The little doggy's jumping up. He's trying to warn the fool not to make another step. But the fool is distracted by something else and does not pay attention. He will start paying attention as we go through this journey of his. But let's get started. So we know that the key is the zero on there, on here. Now, I love this key because the number zero gives an insight to the meaning behind this card. The zero is the first number in the sequence, and yet it is the last number to be added. It is a complete, cir a complete circle, and the symbol for the zero has no beginning or no end, so it is timeless. So if you're reading this card, you know if it comes up. Okay, so if he's not making excuses, there is a timeless element to this. There's no beginning or no end. So the full card at the beginning of the deck or the end may be made out even to be an idiot or naive. But here's the thing about the fool. He speaks the truth. And that's what this is all about. He may be the biggest fool in the deck, but he's truthful. He speaks the truth. There's no lie there, here. So the zero is a reminder of the almost absurdity and unknowability that he represents. I love this card because it's very... It's, it's got a lot of things going on here. The major color represented in this card is yellow. That's a given. The Hebrew letter associated with this card is a leaf. Now, that is A-L-E-P-H, a leaf. The letter number associated to this card is a number one, because he is the first card in the deck, however, the key is zero. The astrological planet is Uranus. He is an air element, and if you can believe this, there are musical notes attached to each card that give them each a meaning, and the musical note that is associated with the fool is an E natural. That's very interesting, isn't it? We don't, as we go through the journey, sometimes we just don't even know how this is going to resonate with everything. And as they come up in a card, in a reading, and as they are with other cards, this is going to make it a lot more informational if you're not only reading for yourself, but for someone else. But let's talk about this yellow sky. The yellow sky represents the dawning of a new day. I love that because each day is a new beginning in the fool's journey. And through the major arcana, the sun begins his journey through the sky. Now, the white sun is another element here, but it adds the intensity that a normal blue sky would not. So having a yellow sky means that there's more intense meaning and the intensity of the sky, along with the doggy barking, the fool in mid-step, conveys that this, again, is a card of action. And basically, you're taking a leap into a new beginning. So you see, this card can actually mean you are taking a new beginning. It can mean that there are excuses. It means that there is timeless. You see how many meanings that this card can take on. So this white sun is very interesting. And the reason it's white is because it represents a blank canvas. It's a clean slate. And that's what the fool represents. It's the start of his new journey. And yet his life is going to be, will be, and has been filled with memories and experiences and even color. Boy, this sounds like it's going to start resonating with many of us, doesn't it? 
So the naive sun lights the path for the fool, and the sun will reveal to the fool the road of enlightenment. I love this. So there's a red feather here. I think sometimes we think that that is a cap, but it actually is a red feather. The red feather illustrates that there is passion and vitality and that there is an intensity that complements the yellow sky and that adds action and a dynamic action to this card. The fool is a naive and innocent fellow and he is not without drive. The fool is persistent. He is confident and he's motivated and resolved to go through this journey. He is determined, like many of you, like I have been, to start a new journey. And actually, every day we begin that new journey, even though we feel it's same in some respect. The white rose. Well, I have always taken this as my interpretation. He may have stopped to smell the roses, but he carried one with him as a memory. And I believe that sometimes some of us carry things with us as a memory, so we are forced not to forget. Have you ever done that? You've been with someone and you want to keep, have a keepsake, so you are not for, so you are forced not to forget. The white rose also means innocence and purity. That's correct. He's not been violated. He's not been in a position where he has to defend himself, but not yet. It correlates with this blank canvas of the sun. And it also feeds into this idea of a new beginning. This is basically like a rose from the ground. The fool is also detached. Isn't that wonderful? Free to wonder the earth in enlightenment. So he does not have any responsibilities, no care. And that's how he's able to be distracted and looking up and not understanding where he's going. But yet this fool is very truthful. So let's talk about this pouch. The pouch carries a symbol. And I don't know if you can see it on there. It's like a bird. Some people say it's like a phoenix. And basically what this means is that he symbolizes that he is an airy or he's an air sign. He's an airy individual. The fool is just the beginning and he is not free though from burden. He's got to carry his own load and he's got to bear his own weight. And this winged creature on this pouch is this winged beast that is free to roam the earth. So it's almost as though it's an indication where he can just take off and go whenever he wants to. So you see how many elements and how many interpretations that this foal can mean or give you in a reading? Some people do say that this is a phoenix. I have never read that as a phoenix, but some do. And basically the phoenix does follow a path from beginning to end. And in, in like the tarot deck. Um, actually, this, this pouch comes from a Latin word. I believe it's pronounced folis. It's spelled F-O-L-L-I-S. Forgive me if I butchered that pronunciation. But it means a bag of wind. It could mean that you cannot take this fool character seriously. Lots of meaning in this, in this card. We've got a little way to go yet, but not very long. So the staff and the wand carry this pouch. That means that the fool needs support. It is a path of enlightenment, but you know, as we are told, the road is wide, but the enlightenment road is very narrow. 
It is not a sign of his weakness because sometimes he will use it as a walking stick. But it is a sign that he may, ha- he may need more friends or more loved ones near to depend on. I think this is a very, very interesting resolve because the wand is a current connotation to the tarot and op- often representing the will of a person. It's interesting that the motto of the wands, so that would be, this is the wand, the motto of the wands in the beginning was the deed, a man of action. And so the staff gives us the idea of action and beginnings and the journey. It's getting pretty in depth, isn't it? The white dog at the full, at, at the full side here, um, He really reminds us because he is white like the sun, white like the rose. He is pure and he lends support as does the wand or the staff. The fool has this dog as a companion. Many of us have done that. It warns of danger and also provides him love and companionship during this very interesting and difficult journey that he's going through. This dog is not only warning him, but he's also ecstatic. He's energetic. And it also helps to illustrate that this card has motion, that there's a lot of movement in this card. And I think that you feel that too. The mountains in the background represents a long, perilous journey ahead. They symbolize what is to come, the difficulties not only in life, but in our minds. But it is far ahead. He's not to that point yet. And it's a reminder that this is the beginning of the road with a destination. Isn't this, isn't this exciting to know all these things? The fool's pose, now this is the biggest thing. The way he's standing there, when it encapsulates the entire card, his arms are open wide, he's not protecting himself, he's ready to embrace the unknown, he's ready and eager, willing, and he encourages us, he encourages us that the beginning, to begin things with life and zeal, and gusto, as as the phrase says, seize the day. So it's a reminder that we welcome opportunity and changes coming through. Now, of course, when you see in a reading that the card is upright, it is a sign of new beginnings, fresh starts, that you're starting on a new journey, and it is encouragement for those who are undecisive and who have a big decision coming up in their lives. This card basically says, go for it. Take the plunge, jump in. You don't have anything to lose. Embrace this experience and embrace the life of the unknown to the fullest. Like this dog, When you see this card in a reading, it can protect the reader in uncertainty. So providing the other cards around it are in support of of this full card, you will know that you're starting something new and there will be an indication of whether there is something that you need to be warned about or something that is not. Now, I do not read reverse cards. I don't. That's my personal preference and I know many do. I feel that during this time many of us have perhaps things in our lives that are already not so nice, not so good and I do believe that as time goes on in the reading we will and we do see enough obstacles and upset 
and I don't believe in adding to them or adding to the stress of someone who is asking the question. But for those who are interested in a reverse meaning, and let's just turn this card around. That's what it looks like in reverse. Some say upside down, but this is, con this is considered to be reverse. It is a sign of a lack of confidence and a sign of hesitation. So it's everything opposite that we have learned about this card being upright. It is the opposite. You have a fear of failure, and that fear of failure is preventing you to proceed in your journey. Or you may have too many obstacles to get you over past a barrier to your goal. That you're afraid of the unknown. And maybe it has even been telling us in this reverse that someone may be acting a little reckless. And you may not be or someone may not be doing enough to get to the end of the journey. It can actually mean that someone is more carefree and it will actually warn to live in the moment and encourage to embrace the unknown. So you see, I think this pretty much tells us the meanings of the cards. I love this full card and I'm glad you've stopped by today. But I want to mention something more before we go on. In many of the cards, you're going to see this little symbol. And I know many have asked, what does that mean? That is the actual signature of the artist. Her name is Pamela Coleman Smith. They referred to her. She had a little nickname of Pixie. And she died in 1951. But she actually met... Um, Arthur Waite, this is the Rider Waite card, and Arthur Waite commissioned her to do this artwork. I love this. She was born in the late 1800s. So you can see that her art really reflects and really gives us the meaning of these cards. We'll get to this Two of Swords soon enough. But I want to thank you for coming by today to the Great 78. The next card that we're going to be looking for in the journey is the magician number one and I love this infinite symbol above his head there's a lot of meaning here so make sure you stop back for that one I appreciate you so much thank you so much for coming by I really enjoyed bringing this to you I hope you've learned more about this card in this journey and what this card can represent in a reading and maybe even for you today Thank you so much again. My name is Zelda Kelly, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.